it's so hard today to just free flow what's coming out of my mind. Because <sighs> I'm following a rubbish truck. That, that, that's the problem. I'm following a damn rubbish truck. Okay, so back to normal. Today, I'm taking you all to see Larry Pollock. He is the owner of Arrow Instrument. He creates, designs, manufactures custom guitar pickups and amplifiers. So where I live is in Mountain View. Here's one mountain. And he lives on another mountain. So we are going to join mountains together. And I am going to be bringing my solar guitar, my white one. And I will be installing my Wicked 1 and 2 pickups. Very excited for that. Nothing's wrong with the pickups in the, the solar guitars that as it comes with it, but I have a certain style and um, of playing that uh, I like certain way the cleans come out. I like um, I like certain responsive of responses of how I attack the string and uh, the pickups that I that are made for me um, is what's going in those puppies. So going to be the first solar guitars to get modded, and I'm very excited for that. I have uh, I brought my new solar guitar. Um, I brought my custom K2, and I brought blues acoustic and my acoustic that uh, Larry's going to be um, fitting for uh, custom pickups on the acoustics. And um, on my custom, he is going to fix a, a volume pot on the, the volume knob. And if I touch it, it makes a crinkly, hissy noise. Larry's a genius. He is the Willy Wonka of technology that I've ever known. And he has like this huge warehouse built out of cedar. It's cool. And all these machines in there and it's crazy. And he's got all custom like blood wood and coal wood and all these crazy custom woods in his place that he uses to make uh, pickup covers or his, um, his amp boxes with. And, uh, a really cool guy. Really glad that uh, uh, I got to be friends with Larry and you know uh, I love his products I love his D-Buzz the D-Buzz is another one I, I'm gonna probably throw this all in together uh, what it really is but the D-Buzz is made from every instrument and um, hope you guys enjoy it sometimes when you like go make make and you like one guitar put one here go pick one there and you make the kind and then the kind go like that back up bug all bus up so you don't like make like that anymore so you gotta undo the make make redo the stuff and then you go back inside and you fix them and then you come back out alive on the other end but still yet yeah, the ear gonna make the sound they gonna make you go make make and then you're like oh okay i get them now so now i understand what you mean by you go make make yeah i'm gonna take my guitars i'm gonna see larry and then go make make cool all the connects over here they know how to make make and uh i'm just lucky to know connect next in the music business you know and Later's bra, okay? Shaka, shaka bra. Wow, how's it, brother? Brother man's, how's it hanging, brother man's? Yay. So the pain, the calamity, I just don't get away from the pleasure and the pain of blood tire. Wants to see your blood and mind, then don't arrive or die, no dreams on fire. Build again inside my mind, who is the victor of these genius wars? The stillness or the rage of panic, the belief was getting hidden behind. So the question I ask of you Is there an answer? Or will it be too late to find why do I suffer? This is where I feel the most Hey, we 
we get to Larry's, you will never know how to find Larry's house. going inside. Let's check this stuff out, man. Let's check it out, man. Let's do this. Yeah. We are at the Minerva Ranch in Kaumana, Kilo, Hawaii. I am with Larry Pollock from Aero Instruments, the creator of my custom pickups um, and soon to be my custom amp. And um, that, this is Larry Pollock, everyone. So um, I, I know all of you out there were asking about my pickups. What are they? How are they made? What are they made out of? I'm not the guy, I'm more of the player. So I wanted to do this a little interview with Larry and actually have him explain what they are and why they sound so amazing. Um, so, you know, so this is my bridge pickup and um, these are what type of pickups? They're the eight Aero HP6. They're a the bridge. A, the boat, oh, oh, this is a uh, HP6 Type 3 Level 3. All that is a model number for me, meaning an Alnico 2 pickup with basically the highest output that can be had in this kind of configuration. So it's a very, it's the hottest pickup I put in any guitar. Okay, and then my my neck pickup. What what, um, what did you do with that one? That is again another HB6 pickup, and it is a type one, no type two, uh, level uh, one. So it's more of a neck pickup. It's a lower output, and it's uh, Alnico five, but it type two designates the low impedance, and the low impedance is important for the most clarity. It, it actually is one of the cleanest guitar pickups you'll probably ever play. Yes, yeah, no it is. It is it is the sweetest cleanest <laughs> guitar pickup I've ever played. I'm I just clean. wanted I just wanted to say also that HB6 all it is is a humbucker pickup like anybody's PAF pickup. It's just redesigned to get rid of all the problems that humbucker pickups had. And the two major problems that they had were the string spacing never lined up, so these are exact string spacing to the guitar. And the pickups are, PAFs are very microphonic. There's no real good way to get rid of it without ruining the pickup. So it required a redesign, but they are drop-in replacements. There is no fussing with your guitar to, to fix it, to make it work, they work right away. They'll fit in a, a pickup ring. You know, if there's a ring here, they'll mount from the ring. Whereas in this case, they're mounting into the body. Arrow's also making a, a Series 13 pickup, which is this pickup uh, without the ears. So for uh, builders, luthiers, who don't want to have this funny kind of shape and don't want the mounting ring, it has four mounting holes, and the pickup is in the middle. It's another adaption of the same exact pickup as this one. I can build them with all the options that pretty much you can get in any of them, any humbucker. I'll even build you the old style PAF if you want, but I'll discourage you. <laughs> yeah. So Larry did a version of the uh, Series 13 pickup on uh, my black eight string that you guys already seen, where it's only the pickup custom fit into the routed cavity. So, I was hoping to build more guitars in the future of my own customs, and Larry's designing those uh, Series 13 pickups to fit custom inside, because the, yeah, the whole things are cool, but they're not really cool. You know, you see the screw, so it would be a neater configuration of how your pickups lay in the, the body. The other thing is these pickups tend to do this. They when you have four forward. mounting holes, they won't move. They'll be, they'll be, you know, when, with hum canceling pickups. Another problem with a humbucker was that if it was cocked, like say forward, this wouldn't sense as well as that, and you wouldn't get proper hum canceling. If you can adjust that perfectly, this is another thing that we sort of overcome. HB sixes are work a little flatter. You put a little piece of foam underneath rather than mount on springs, and you totally flatten them out. But the Series 13 totally eliminates that problem. So. 
Right, so I'm going to let them hear the difference from my bridge pickup and the neck pickup. Sure. And um, we are playing on one of Larry's amps that he built. Uh, this is a early amp for me. It was uh, first designed in 1994. It's called a black and white. I'm not currently building them. We're sort of in the process of reinvigorating the line. And uh, but this is a uh, one of my earliest versions of that amp, so I still own it. So I'm going to play the same thing twice on two different pickups with the beautiful Hilo rain in the background. Yeah, it's right. actually storming outside, but uh, that, that's Hilo, that's Hawaii. So That's why we love it. Yes. through the high note comes through yeah this is unusual again another thing that the HB6 or HB6A or the series 13 do is they have a complete frequency response broader than the instrument and therefore all the content is there and as in many humbuckers the highs are cut out for the PAF styles and the, or they're over exaggerated in a very weird way yeah and it's just not true with an arrow pickups I love them. I love these pickups. I used to, when I used to um, first come to Larry, I would always talk about, oh man, tone, clarity. Um, I play so fast rhythmically that all the notes get all, it turns, the other picks that I would use would turn into mush when I, the faster I went, the more mushy it got, and it was just a bunch of noise. And then he got me into the Aero pickups and he installed it on one of my first um, guitars, which was a uh, Les Paul, and when I played fast rhythmically with heavy distortion saturation going on, you could hear every pick attack, every total note change. Um, so it was just a uh, mind blowing for me. So I really got into it, and I was like, "Man, make me one that's like hot like this pickup, and 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 clean like this pickup." And he was like, "I'll do one better. I'll make them better for you." And I was like. <laughs> Cool. So here's my customs K2. Uh, my other custom at home has the pickups in them. Basically, I believe all of my guitars have arrow pickups in them, except for the two new Solar guitars I got. So those are being made or will be made. So I will be having every guitar almost have them. My seven strings have them. My eight strings have them. And to note that the seven and the eight string guitar, you guys saw those videos, but. The bass response again is full clarity, tonality um, coming through. It's not a, 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 a funny sounding bass. It's a real clean, I mean, clean sounding bass. Well, you have another advantage. You actually tune down. Yeah. So it, on most guitars, they don't have this low bass note. And yeah. so it's not, most guitar players don't hear the bass response from the arrow pickup because it's not really that bassy, but if Jeremiah tunes down. So. Yeah. So I'm going to drop C tuning. And literally, you can't feel it, but when I'm playing my fifth string down, this is how glassy that sounds, bro. It's classy, glassy sound, right? And it, um, when I hit the sixth string, it's almost like a bass player is on the side of me and I can feel the speaker push the note out of the speaker, it's really nice. And um, 
I'll do my bridge pickup more on distortion. You guys heard me do that already. You can really hear the. say about this guitar this is a local guy also you know, yeah. we're, work, we're working local here today in Elo yeah uh, Fred Bento built this guitar yeah and the response of the guitar is really great and the, the thing about an arrow pickup is its frequency response is broader than any instrument you can put it in so whatever that instrument sounds like acoustically that's going to be the sound of this instrument and in Fred's case it's really Phenomenal guitar that projects really well acoustically, yeah. and, and you're hearing even, it electrically. Even like this. It really does that. It's the same thing, though. That's the, the funny thing about it. Most people, when they play acoustically, when they play electrically, it's not the same. When you play acoustically and you play electrically. Another thing Larry created and developed, which is awesome, is called the D-Buzz, and I'm going to let him introduce what that does, because I did it once, and I can't talk, Larry is like the Willy Wonka of pickups and amplification, and I literally have to tell him, I don't understand what you just said, and he'll break it down for me to understand what he said, which is really cool, and he doesn't look down on me for that, he just is, he wants me to really understand what his pickups does. He really wants me to understand what his cables do and his amps do and how they work on a scientific level. But then he's able to break it down for me to let me understand like, oh no, this is this is kind of what it does. And it, it's really cool. And, and our relationship has been going on for four, years now. about four or five years. Yeah, since about 2014. I yeah, and I met Larry and it was just like, you're a pickup guy and you live in Hawaii? What? And I just ha I immediately had to come up, met him. He has a beautiful cedar monster building made out of cedar. It has awesome smells. We can't show you any of this mad scientist stuff, so this is all you get, which is fine. I might give you a snapshot of what outside looks like. That's okay. And, um, show off the show solar panels. You know. Oh, we're man. Green. We're, we're green. We're, this is an all green. Also, also all green manufacturing business right here too. So, right on. So I'm gonna let him talk about the D-Buzz. The D-Buzz is a basically a, a cable that eliminates ground noise. It doesn't. There's a, two major sources of noise: are ground noise and common mode noise. Common mode noise is eliminated by hum canceling pickups like that. Uh, ground noise is ground loops, bad grounding. Like if this bridge was aluminum, it wouldn't ground or painted. Uh, some people use plastic coated strings, they don't ground. So this takes care of it and basically what you do is, it's like a regular cable but you have to use it in this one direction. You can't use it, you can't flip it around. And there's a sensor that you slip between the waistband of your elastic of your underwear and your and your skin on the end that you plug in your guitar and then you're all, you're done. And the nice thing about it for us is that it's not a product like a pickup, which is OEM, that you have to install. It's something that you can just buy and use. Instantly hear a difference. Instantly. And it works uh, if you don't have any ground noise and you say, well, I don't need it. But if you, you were playing and you started to have ground noise, it would work automatically. So it's not like you have to do anything. Using it is just like using a cable. And, you know, it's simple. That's the yeah. whole idea. And that was the, the genesis of it. And it it's actually Jeremiah that inspired me because he had a really noisy guitar. This thing <laughs> existed in my shop as another device that was more complicated to use, had to be installed in guitars. We didn't want to sell it because, again, we'd have to, people would have to install it, would have to be, you know, more hassle. And I don't know, one, one day I was saying, boy, if it was just in a cable, you know, and yeah. there we are. Yeah. And so his Ibanez, the problem, with, we installed a set of arrows in his Ibanez, there's graphite paint inside the Ibanez. The graphite paint was acting like an antenna yeah. and picking up all the noise in the room. And 
it's only because the arrow pickups are hot enough to amplify that noise. The pickups he had in it before were so dead that the noise barely came through. So now he plugs in the D-Buzz and the noise goes away and yeah. life is good. Like it, awesome. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, and good. I have the prototypes. <laughs> um, I have two prototypes of the D Buzz in its original form, so I'm keeping those. But no, anything um, up and coming in the in the works for Aero Instruments that you're going to be starting to release and bring out, besides my my new app. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things <laughs> in the works. <laughs> new <don't>... app. <laughs> Sorry. There's lots of new things coming out. Like I said, uh, we've talked about it before. We're the Series 13 pickup is going to be available next month. Uh, this uh, Chapman stick pickup guts replacement is going to be available probably this month, but next month for sure. And we also make other different Chapman stick pickups, but this is the stick up. Uh, we're also making some other no noise control devices uh, that are a little bit to, to handle common mode noise. So we're sort of adding to our line of things there. We're not really ready to release those. Though sometime this year, hopefully, we'll be releasing a, a small preamp this year to a pedal style thing. Uh, there's lots of little things coming along. It's just, uh, you know, it takes time and and engineering and stuff and getting the right pieces in place and to get it done. And we're, we're getting there. So, right on. Yeah. And maybe throw in a, a wicked 13 overdrive pedal. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. no, he, he Since I awesome. met Jeremiah, we've been talking about building a distortion. In fact, that's another thing that we've talked about. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, towards the end of this year, we'll have a higher powered amp than the one we're building. And um, that'll be uh, perhaps about 35 watts, maybe be able to overdrive it a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Maybe yeah. something. Push it. Yeah, something you'd like a little bit. I mean, the stuff we build now is more in the fidelity region rather than distortion region because. It's so easy to distort things, yeah. and nobody has clean anything. Yeah. Jeremiah said something to me that I've always loved. He said two things when, when he first heard uh -huh. the D-Buzz with the Aero amp, with the Aero pickups. He said, I'm going to have to learn to play guitar again because yeah. I can hear every mistake I'm making. That no, was one it, thing. Yeah, go ahead. What was the second one? And the second one was that you had referred to it before when you were... It was the first amp-guitar combination that they've ever played where you're playing metal music, which has got the very fast arpeggios that get muddy, that you can play solos on an electric guitar as opposed to you track on an acoustic guitar yeah. before that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah so, and that was the... So the getting the signal in there clean, which is what I'm talking about, why distort it before it gets in there, and then now you can do it on an electric guitar, which is more conducive to better playing and lots yeah. of things. So, no, before I move to the arrow, arrow pickups, or um, I call them Wicked 1 and 2, but it's the HB6 model. Um, but what what I first played it, I I mentally couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't like really jump into like, and like really like it because I thought I was a good player, um, but the other pickups that I would use would hide. And you guys are gonna know what I mean. When you guys have junk pickups and you guys start getting better pickups, the junker pickups, you're away, especially with heavy distortion, you're able to get away with a lot of nuances that um, isn't heard because it's hidden in the frequency. But when I got to the arrows and it was clean, and I was like, I was like, wow, super clean. I mean, you hear the pick hit the string. I don't know, I'll, I'll do a better review, but you can hear it. So when I hit distortion on it, I, it sounded slop, I sounded sloppy. I, I, my plane wasn't as good. It wasn't. I was like, wow, um, I gotta clean up my act. So it took me about a week, maybe a week and a half, to get my chops to where I could and really get it to where it's nice and clean, tight, proficient, distorted, but clarity, metal again. So all the other pickles I had before, I was getting away, away with a lot of sloppy playing, but this makes you better. Just wanted to introduce you guys to Larry. You know, I, I, I pop up his logo, I pop up his name, I say his name on the videos, but here's Larry. Yeah. And he's been crazy awesome, very helpful for me and my wife, Blue. He designed the custom pickup for Blue on her base. Um, his pickups also, which are really cool, is that you can do overlays 
So like for my custom, I got a coil top, but I put ebony as the overlay for my pickup. I, it could have been maple, coa, coca bola, white, white plastic, it's, it's black actually plastic. Just a, it's a piece that pops off is what he's talking about. Yeah. And so the magnets come through the part and so you can match it to your guitar. In fact, if you have a guitar top and you have some extra wood and you want it to match it to your guitar top, you send us the wood, we'll yeah. build the overlays and there you go. And it'll match the it'll match your grain. That'd yeah. be really cool. Um, so he has some he has a Coca Bola. Yeah. version of it of the the HV6 this is just another version of the same pickup it's thinner in in height yeah it doesn't have as many options one of the things I miss talking about about the, the HB6 is every option I make fits in for this pickup fits into that and but it needs a depth of guitar you have to have a Les Paul or like a 335 like a semi hollow body guitar to use them uh, an SG would not this pickup would bottom out. You wouldn't get any adjustment in an SG. This pickup is shorter and will adjust uh, down far enough in an SG. It's the same height as a, I don't know if you can see this, but it's the same height as a standard humbucker cover. So anything you can do with a, a standard humbucker, you can do with the HB6A. Unfortunately, though, one of the fun options that you can get an HB6 that you can't get in an HB6A is the coil tap option. Jeremiah doesn't have that. Yeah. But what you can do with the coil tap option is, as opposed to um, the standard humbucker where people split the bobbins, the humbucker is very loud, the split version of the single coil is very quiet, and they'll use a volume pedal to adjust that, and it works out for them, but there's a huge volume drop you have to compensate for it. With a coil tap pickup, you actually get three pickup or three bobbins on two pickups. One of them is a single coil. The other two bobbins act as the hum canceling pickup. So you get a true single coil pickup. And you usually build them on the two outside versions, and they can actually be used as a hum canceling pair, like in a strap, like the front and the middle pickup, in the same way. So you can actually blend them and use them yeah. that way. That's available in the HP6, not in the HP6A. It's just the size of the pickup it can't fit so yeah so like another thing too for like uh, guitar players uh, using Evertune um, and are installing Evertune to their guitars that don't have it or buy the guitars with Evertune the HP6A would be the route to go because they're thinner because these ones when we did them we didn't understand uh, how the bridge was going to affect the pickup they, luckily everything fit, fit perfectly but there's not much room for adjustment but it's already perfect, so we lucked out. But if you have an Evertune bridge system or are planning to put one in and you want to check out the Arrow pickup, I get the HV6A. You can get it again in Ebony, Coca Cola, Coa, Maple, any, those, hardwood. any hardwood you want. And he can send you pictures of what he has available for you to look at to pick from, or you can send your own, like you said. But this is as custom as you're ever going to get on a guitar pickup or bass pick pickup. Um, there, this is the most quality. Everything is done pretty much just by Larry. Yeah, one off. He's everything he does is with his hands. He he, he does everything. So this is the highest quality build you'll probably get to see. Made made in Hilo, Hawaii, unbelievable. Made in Hilo, Hawaii. Yep. And when when I pack them in the box, you get the air from Hilo along with the pickups. So yeah. Have a piece of Hawaii. The air from Hawaii is free, <laughs> right? <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> I just want to thank Larry for giving me the time to do this. I know you guys was always curious and messaging me how much are the pickups, what do they do, how does it work, what does exact string spacing mean? Oh. Um, you know, so I would get that in my messenger, <laughs> not on, so everybody could read it. Yeah. But here it is. Hopefully, we answered all the questions. The price retail for you, Larry, for a set. Uh, a set of neck and a bridge pickup would be? Standard pickups are about, uh, start as low as 250 and go as high as 350. And then overlays are actually separate because they're a different piece of work. Most of the time, the magnets just come and I have a pickup here with, oh yes I do actually. Uh, this is a, an HB7. It's a little, it's just a seven string version of this, that exact pickup that he has there. And this is without the overlay, it's yeah. just a black bobbin. So it's just a bobbin with the flush magnets on it. Yeah. I'll, I'll get pictures of all the close-ups. And, and actually, Jeremiah has another guitar. It's a Ibanez Prestige. It has it's a seven-string. Yeah. 
and it has an HB7I, which is specifically for the Ibanez. It's designed to fit into the crazy route that they made yeah. where the existing pickup did not, and it, it looks really cool. It's a very cool pickup. So all my Ibanez friends, it's custom for Ibanez. Um, a lot of the guitars I had was Ibanez first before I made my customs. And they're all different. He would come in and we'd take out the pickups and he'd measure the whole cavity. He'd be like, man, this is a weird one. But he made them custom for Ibanez too. So I know all of you Ibanez guys out there, the, you're going to love them. The tone's amazing. And I think if you want the high-end custom stuff like mine, they're they're like, what, 5 550 for like high end, high end. Uh, probably yeah. spacing. If you got if you got the whole works, they'd be about four hundred and ten a pickup. Wow, a pickup. A pickup, yeah. Okay. So, so eight twenty a set. But that would be coil tap, the overlays. That That's would the be, whole shebang. That would be as far as I go, you know. And, yeah. And you know, we're it's all work to us. We charge for time and materials. We're the last custom pickup manufacturer, pretty much in the business. Nobody cares. We. As Jeremiah said, we really do make everything here. And a lot of like, if you got stuff from Koa, out of Koa from us, it's grown right here on the property. Oh yeah. I mean, there's like- He has some Koa trees, man, some Ohias. Lots of, we, we do, we're the last people that care about <laughs> doing anything. And I, I actually wanted to mention something about Jeremiah, you know, the interesting thing about Jeremiah is that he asks a lot of questions. And he has, he says, this is working for me in this way or not that way, and that's everybody. But he has had a, a leisure that most people don't have. He lives close enough to me that he can ring his guitars and, and say, this is what I want or this is what I don't want. And sometimes I have things laying around. We can try and we do stuff yeah. to, to make it work out. Yeah. And that is an unusual situation for a player, yeah. but it's one that should be thought about. I mean... You, if you think that you can go to somebody and say, you know, I want this particular thing and, you know, you're going to make it for me and it's going to be exact and believe me, I'm good at it, but I can't read your tonal mind yeah. and uh, I'll get it as close as you can tell me. If you measure your string spacing, I'll build it exactly how you tell me, but if you measure it wrong, I'm going to build it wrong. It's that yeah. kind of feedback that I need. And Jeremiah has gone through this with me. Yeah over a long time yeah and uh, we have sort of narrowed down the things that he likes and doesn't like and that's really important people unfortunately either can't afford to or aren't curious enough to try things and uh, that we do I mean not I'm not talking about going to some other brand that's not going to work for you we have so many options and so yeah. many ways to reconfigure that you working with within our format you'll get something that you want either the first time or maybe the second time. I'm not saying you have to come back, but, you know, there. Are, in fact, we talked about this today. This pickup is the HP6. You could have a coil-tapped option. Jeremiah's like, well, what do I have to do to get a coil-tapped option? Well, you'd send me back the pickup. I would scrap. I would cut the wire off the bobbins. I wouldn't have to remake it. And I'd, and I'd have to, oh, sorry, I'd have to remake one bobbin. And uh, so it's not as much to get there yeah. as it would have been to buy a whole set. Yeah. You know, we can remake them and then the, the overlays would work, everything would be the same. You keep the chassis, you know, and the other thing about the HP 6s and 7s, which you can't see while well, they're in the guitar, most humbuckers, if you look at them, the wiring sticking out and yeah. there's an opening here where dirt falls in. These are totally closed. The tape encloses everything. Yeah. The, it's really neat. The really wiring tight, is underneath, inside the chassis closed off to the world. It's not exposed. It's real hard to break these pickups. They're a revolution of humbucker pickups and they're also a paradigm shift in humbucker pickups and that's really unfortunate for me because guitar players are kind of caught in concrete about what they want. They want all PAFs or whatever and I show them an HP6 I say this is a better pickup and they go huh. But there are many reasons why it is. We've covered a few of them today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very fortunate for me to be able to, when I have time that works when he has time for me to go, hey man, what you doing today? And I'll be like, I'm come by. And I'll come by and I'll bring like four guitars or, or every electric guitar I have. And he'd come and he'd, and he'd look at it. But you know, it's not like he's going to do this with everybody. I mean, I built a relationship with Larry over the years. And you know, there's, a, there's, there's trust that's already established between us as, 
as he's a musician as well, uh, as musicians, as friends. I wouldn't be out here introducing you guys to Larry if I didn't believe that his pickups really were the truest tonal sound you'll get out of your instrument, the wood you're using for your instrument, and the amp you're playing through. If you really want your own sound, you know, you gotta start off with a clean, a very clean sound first. Right. The, the, the thing that Jeremiah is, understands about what he's doing is to, he takes this sound now that he has it, and then he modifies it however he wants. Yeah. You know, you have all kinds of toys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and, uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's, it comes like that. You get something as your base, and your base and your foundation is solid. And now you build off of it. So your tone is being built off of a solid foundation. Now, if you use a cheap amp, you're going to have a cheap, solid foundation. If you use a better boutique high-end amp, you're going to have a higher teak, you know, foundation. So it, you, you cannot say, well, you know, I changed the pickles and my guitar sucks. What are you playing it through? Or how are you playing yourself as a guitar player? I had to question myself, man. <laughs> I had to get better, you know. So um, thank you guys again for watching. Um, you guys seem to like my longer videos than my shorter ones for some reason. You guys are crazy. I uh, really appreciate all the likes and the subscribes that you guys are giving me on YouTube and Facebook. But if you have any questions regarding Arrow, Arrow Pickups, I'm going to leave all of his information, his his contact stuff, for you to get a hold of him to ask him questions personally. When you call Arrow Pickups, he's going to answer the phone. And we do. We have phone hours <laughs> from uh, 9 to 2 Hawaii time. and. Hawaii time is different than anywhere else in the United States, so be careful about it. We're behind by up to six hours the East Coast, but people call us from everywhere in the world, whether they speak English or not, yeah. and uh, we talk to them. And we, you know, our sort of philosophy is to advise and educate, and that's the whole game. And you will never get anybody like us. To talk to you about it because we're not trying to sell you like what we have here to sell. If we don't make six pickups, we make 600 pickups, kinds of pickups, and those can be modified. And so we'll talk to you about what you need and we'll build you what you need to the best of our conversation together. How you can sonically tell somebody something verbally of yeah. how you want it, which is almost impossible, but. It, it's possible. And we're not going to change the sound of your guitar. No. We're just going to make it sound like what it sounds like. What it's supposed to sound like. Yeah. And, and so that is unique. Everybody else who builds pickups uh, captures a subset of the total sound. And that makes the pickup sound one way or another. So when you change the pickups, you're getting one subset or another. If there was another pickup like an arrow, yeah. and you could adapt it so the outputs were the same, then you, you could get the same sound out of the guitar, but there isn't. And so, come to us, we'll hook you up. And... Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Bella's channel. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Yes. Yes. Question I ask of you is that